Hello children, welcome to biology class. We completed the lesson reproduction in organism. Today let's discuss the exercise questions. Children, uh, don't expect these questions as such for your examination. After reading the textbook, try to find answers for these questions, okay? And don't forget to copy these questions and answers to your notebook. So shall we start? The first one, why is reproduction essential for organisms? Know that reproduction is the ability of living organisms to produce a young one similar to itself. It ensures continuity of a species generation after generation. Reproduction introduces variation in organisms. Useful variations are essential for adaptation and evolution. Therefore, it is essential. Okay. Then, uh, which is better mode of reproduction, sexual or asexual? We know that sexual reproduction is a better mode of reproduction. And what are the reasons? We just now explained it, isn't it? It helps for variation and it's an important factor for evolution and it helps for adaptation and it helps to produce vigor and vitality. Hmm? That means genetic recombination, interactions, etc. during sexual reproduction provide a vigor and vitality to the offspring. Okay, then next one. Uh, why is offspring formed by sexual reproduction referred to as clone? Huh? A sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which single individual is capable of producing offspring. So these offsprings are not only identical genetically and morphologically similar to one another but also similar to parent. So clone is a term given to individuals that are genetically and morphologically similar. Thus the offsprings produced by a sexual reproduction are called clones. Okay. And then question number four. Offspring formed due to sexual reproduction have better chance of survival. Why? Is this the statement always true? Ah, what is the answer? The offspring obtained from sexual reproduction have better chance of survival because the genetic material of such organisms are formed from both parents. Daughter organisms or offspring show variation that leads to evolution of species. And this statement is true and we just uh, explained uh, uh, its answer, isn't it? Then, how does the progeny formed from asexual reproduction differ from those formed by sexual reproduction? The same answers you will get. Okay, just go through the answer. The next one, distinguish between sexual and asexual. And uh, while discussing the class, we had discussed different differences. And what are the differences? Asexual reproduction it occurs only in invertebrates and lower chordates. But sexual reproduction it occurs almost in all types of animals. It is always uniparental, whereas sexual reproduction is biparental. Then gametes are not formed, isn't it? Here two types of gametes are formed, male gamete and female gamete. Then it involves only mitosis. Uh, but here for the development of gametes, which is cell division, yes, meiosis. So it involves both meiosis and mitosis. Then daughter organisms are genetically identical to the parent. Here daughter organisms genetically different from their parents. Okay. Then since there is no variation, so it does not contribute to evolution of the species. But here it contributes to evolution of species. Okay. And don't forget to uh, remember in plants, a sexual reproduction is called vegetative reproduction. Huh? And uh, uh, vegetative plant parts, rhizome, runner, sucker, tuber, bulb, these parts are known as vegetative propagal. They are capable of producing offspring. Okay. Then... Again, the same question, what is vegetative propagation? We discussed the answer now. And don't forget to uh, use this term, vegetative propagals. Okay, vegetative propagals. Then define juvenile phase, reproductive phase and senescence phase. That we already discussed yesterday's class. Juvenile phase, all organisms have to reach a certain stage of growth and maturity in their life before they can reproduce sexually. Okay, whereas the... Um, after juvenile phase, the organisms will move through reproductive phase. Huh? In higher plants, this phase can be easily seen when they come to flower. But in animals, juvenile phase is followed by morphologically and physiologically change, morphological and physiological changes prior to active reproductive behavior. Hmm? So, there is reproductive phases also of variable 
aspirin and different organisms like some plants flower throughout the year while others show seasonal flowering. Uh, in animals like birds, they lay eggs seasonally. But when an um, captivity, captivity means as in poultry farm can be made to lay eggs throughout the year. Then placental mammals undergo cyclic changes in reproductive organs during this phase. Okay. Then last one is senescence phase. It begins from the end of reproductive phase. During this phase of lifespan, there is progressive deterioration in the body. Like slowing of metabolism. Hmm? So old age ultimately leads to death. Okay, that is senescence phase. Next question. Higher organisms have resorted to sexual reproduction in spite of its complexity. Huh? Once this question was asked. What's the answer? Higher organisms have resorted to sexual reproduction in spite of its complexity because sexual reproduction results in multiplication and perpetuation of species okay, and also contributes to evolution of species by introducing variation much more faster than a sexual reproduction in a particular population. So, sexual reproduction enables higher organism to survive during unfavorable conditions. Okay. Then, uh, explain why meiosis and gametogenesis are always interlinked. An importance and uh, direct question. We know that gametogenesis is a formation of two types of haploid gametes. Huh? Male and female gametes has to be formed. So, in gametogenesis, gametes are haploid in number and formed by which, which type of cell division? Yes, meiosis. Hmm? So, the number, meiosis, we know that meiosis is a reductional division. So, the number of uh, chromosomes are half. Clear? Then, Identify, identify the ploidy, haploid or diploid, ovary, ah, diploid, 2N, okay, anther, anther, it is a male organ, so it is diploid, 2N, egg, yes, egg is the gamete, so haploid, N, pollen, it is a male gamete, egg is a female gamete and pollen is a male gamete, so egg, what is the ploidy of egg and pollen, yes, N, half the number of chromosomes. Then again, male gamete, again, N, haploid, zygote. Zygote is, of course, diploid, isn't it? Then, define external fertilization, mention its disadvantage, a direct question. Okay, what are the disadvantages? It occurs only in aquatic medium. A chance factor, uh, a chance factor is very important, requiring synchronous release of gametes nearby and absence of turbulence of water. There is no protection to young ones and they are vulnerable to different uh, predators, isn't it? Then uh, differentiate between zoospore and zygote. What is zoospore? It's a flagellated, motile, motile means movable. Haploid or diploid spores formed inside zoosporangium and it's a result of uh, asexual reproduction. Whereas the zygote is always diploid and formed by the fusion of gametes, it is usually non-flagellated and non-motile or motile. And it is a net result of sexual reproduction. Okay. Then differentiate between gametogenesis and embryogenesis. What is gametogenesis? Yes, it is a uh, synthesis of male and female gametes. What is embryogenesis? Formation of the embryo from the formed zygote. Okay. Then we know that gametes are haploid cells, but uh, here embryos are diploid cells. And both mitotic and meiotic division. Mitotic in the case of haploid animals. If the animal is said to be diploid, which is the type of cell division <clears throat> for the formation of uh, gametes. Yes, meiosis. But here always mitotic cell division. The embryo first it is divided mitotically to two, then to four like that. So always mitotic division for embryogenesis. Okay. Then describe post-fertilization events in a flower. Direct questions. Uh, we discussed already uh, then, uh, in sexual reproduction. Uh, what, uh, what, are, what all are the post-fertilization events? So we know that the zygote formed inside the ovule. Then after fertilization, the sepals and petals and stamens of the flower wither and fall off. But the pistil remain attached to the plant. The zygote develops into embryo and the ovule develops into seed. 
then the ovary develops into a diploid that develops a thick wall of pericarp which is protective in function then after the dispersal seed germinate under favorable condition and it produces new plants clear then <clears throat> what does bisexual flower collect uh, five bisexual flowers from your neighborhood and uh, write the scientific name okay so you collect uh, the names of some uh, your uh, some bisexual flower and try to find its scientific name if any doubts are there uh, call me okay then examine a few flowers of a uh, of any cucurbit plant and try to identify the staminate and pistillate flowers okay so you can do these two questions yourself then uh, next one why are offsprings of oviparous animals at a greater risk as compared to offsprings of viviparous okay uh, so we know that the oviparous animals such as reptiles and birds they lay eggs isn't it so their fertilized eggs are covered by hard shell and the shells uh, they are laid in safe place they laid their eggs in safe places of, uh, in the environment and after incubation period young ones will hatch out Hmm? but in viviparous animal such as a majority of mammals including human being the zygote develops uh, into the young inside the body of female isn't it so after certain growth of period the young ones are delivered by the female parent so due to proper care and protection the chance of survival of young ones are more in viviparous individuals okay that's why oviparous offspring are at a greater risk clear children so that's about uh, uh, the text back questions okay so you read the uh, textbook thoroughly and try to find answers uh, for this question okay children study well so tomorrow let's start the new lesson rep uh, re uh, sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay thank you